So in the previous two videos, uh, we looked at the effect of changing <coughs> the value of the underlying asset on the value of the option. And we could see as the value of the underlying increases, the value of uh, the option increases for a call option. And also for a call option, if you increase the volatility, the value of the option tends to increase as well. And for maturity, uh, less certain the effect, typically close to the exercise, as you increase the maturity of the call option, the value of the option increases. But then if a uh, dividend is uh, greater than zero, increasing the time or the maturity of the contract can actually reduce somewhat the value of the option. So the relationship between the maturity and the value of the option is a little bit indeterminate, whereas for sigma or the volatility of the underlying increasing volatility increases the value of the option and for a call option increasing the stock price or the value of the underlying increases the value of the option. <clears throat> okay, so we could go back to looking at an actual example where Greek uh, option parameters are worked out or Greek option sensitivities are estimated and we could take the Black-Scholes model or Black-Scholes Merton model adopted for currency. Uh, currency might be thought of as any other asset uh, except the yield instead of having a dividend yield you have the risk free rate uh, um, of the foreign currency so if I hold Japanese yen if my domestic currency is US dollars the risk free rate is US dollars but the yield I hold on owning yen is the risk free rate uh, in in uh, a yen denominated account so for all the world, this is exactly identical to uh, black shoals we've used before, except we substituted RF for Q. And if we look at, if we uh, take a, so I took this example from John C. Hull, uh, Option Futures and Other Derivatives, and he just sets out a question where uh, work out the value of a set of Greeks for an option on a uh, currency and the financial institution has seven month European call options on Japanese yen the spot rate is 0 0.8 so S is 0 0.8 X the strike is 0 0.81 the risk for rate in in the United States is 8%, in Japan is 5 volatility of yen is 15%, uh, calculate delta, gamma, vega, theta and rho, interpret each number. So first of all, what's, noting, what's worth noting is we have a call option, we have a set of parameters that we, like any other parameters that we've looked at before, we are going to work out the value of the delta, gamma, vega, theta and rho and offer an interpretation of this. Okay, so to get the ball rolling, the information that we have here in terms of the parameters can be summarized as this. So S, X, the asset value, the exercise, the risk free rate, the risk free rate in a foreign currency time period which in this instance that 0 0.5833 is 7 divided by 12 and sigma is to 15 percent and if we want to work out the value of um, delta which is the first metric here uh, we use e negative rft nd1 if we go into, if we go back to um, the f formulae prescribed or set out in Wikipedia, we have 
in this instance e so the exponential negative q by t q being the dividend yield phi d1 phi here is the normal cumulative probability uh, before we used n uh, to denote the normal cumulative cumulative probability so uh, it's the same as what we have here the only difference is rf denotes the risk free rate instead of using q and the notation just one notational change n here is equivalent to phi in the wikipedia notation so n denoting normal cumulative probability okay so uh, if we work that out we have 0 0.525 to work out and again what is the delta what does the delta mean it refers to the change in the value of the option with respect to change in the value of the underlying and likewise if we continue uh, we also have uh, for the option formula for gamma which is the it's a second order derivative it's the gamma denotes if we go back to wikipedia gamma represents okay it's given by this formula here it's given by this lowercase phi which denotes the normal uh, density function and we'll show how that's worked out in a moment but what does gamma mean gamma represents this the effect of the value of a change in delta with respect to change in s so it's the second order derivative second order uh, effect gamma measures the rate of change in delta with respect to change in the underlying price gamma is the second derivative of the value of the function whereas the delta <coughs> is measures the rate of change at the theoretical option value with respect to change in the underlying assets price so delta we would take to mean uh, the change in the value of the call with respect to change in the value of the stock or the change in the value of the call with respect in this instance to the change in the value of the underlying asset which is a currency and gamma is the effect of well what if we change how much does the delta change if we change the underlying asset so it's the second round effect of changing the value of the asset okay and that can be quite illuminating and can be very important for option uh, traders who want to hedge and are engaged in delta hedging they look at uh, the gamma okay so uh, so how do we work out the value of of uh, gamma gamma it requires as an input uh, the normal density function and to estimate the normal n dash d1 as opposed to n d1 uh, gamma requires us to work out 1 over 2 square root of 2 pi e to the power of the d1 we've been using all along squared so uh, d1 squared take the negative divided by 2 Okay, and if we go back to uh, just understanding what the density function is, I've mapped out the density function here for a standardized normal distribution. And the if we just open this up, just have a look, you can see uh, if we took x as being what's on the horizontal axis here, and uh, the vertical axis is given by 1 over 2 pi 3.14 is a just a, in a, a rounded up value for pi and we're taking the square root of that and then we're multiplying it by uh, 
A2, so A2, if you like, is our D1. Okay, D1, it's been squared, it's been divided by 2, and we take the negative of that value and put to the x and then exponentiate the value. Okay, so really what the probability density function gives is the height of the curve and or the height of the normal distribution function. That's what the probability density function is uh, mapping out for us here. In um, in the estimation we make here, we work out the value. Where is this 0 0.0516 coming from? It's coming from the D1 that we've worked out. We div uh, divide it by 2. We divide that value by, we square it, we divide it uh, by 2, and we take the negative. And that gives us our 0 0.3969. And then to estimate gamma, gamma here is n, the probability density function, multiplied by the exponential RF by t, and then the value of the underlying acid, the sigma square root of t. So we have 4.2. And then we have, we estimate vega. And vega is s square root of t, and again the probability density function being used. And if we input our parameters, the parameters are what was initially given. We've taken them from here. The narrative, these are parameters, inputs. And we can see that the value of the vega is 0 0.2355. And likewise, uh, for theta, again, the formula given here. Again, you can compare. If you take this formula just to compare against what we have in Wikipedia, the formulas are the same. The big difference stem from the fact that we use a slightly different notation. When we have the lowercase Greek phi, it means we're using... A normal density function and where we have a capital Phi we're using a, the, the normal the normal cumulative probability and this function is given by norms this in Excel but it's the same function same formula driving the estimation here so we work out theta and we get this value 0 0.0399 and then the last value here is the row for the call option and again if we go back into our spreadsheet into our wikipedia you can see that for the calls row was given by this so the exercise the time period e negative in this instance rf by t and then nd2 